Intel Vision event uh, was a 50-50, I'll call it NDA versus public uh, event. I always need to watch very carefully what I say publicly, but in addition to analysts, Intel had its biggest customers, uh, its biggest partners here at the event, and a ton of uh, Intel salespeople and, of course, uh, executive. Dan, you and I got the chance to chat with the big guy, Big Pat, uh, Pat mm -hmm. Gelsinger, in, in addition to uh, the leader of the PC group. Yep, uh, Michelle Pat Johnson, Justin Brandon Hotard. Day, Justin Hotard, just a lot of great stuff, and also the leader uh, of Edge uh, as well. So the executive access was incredible. So two big announcements here. One was Gaudi 3, and there wasn't a tremendous amount of new information about Gaudi 3, but it is sampling. And for certain workloads, it does uh, operate quicker uh, than NVIDIA for training and uh, inference. And, you know, you might be saying, hey, a 50% uh, improvement uh, doesn't matter, but it, it does. Uh, this is classic accelerator versus GPU. If your accelerator can't be faster and more efficient, you're, you're doing something very wrong. Because GPUs on the whole uh, are uh, more easily programmable but less efficient. And the big story that, that Intel uh, came with is, is its programmability across its multiple variants of, of silicon. Now, one API doesn't uh, hit, it, hit it all yet. Uh, I think, you know, Intel will sell, I would say, single-digit billions of this product before we get to what I think is going to be more of a transformative opportunity for Intel, and that's 2025 when you have the combination of CPUs uh, with uh, onboard inference, when you have Falcon Shore GPU sprinkled with the uh, Gaudi uh, 3 ASIC juice uh, inside of it, and then connected with an end to end uh, a software platform. And, you know, Matt uh, is my AI hardware guy. He's piecing together the TCO story kind of a, on a generational basis. Because the one thing we know with GPUs is you're going to get three to four generations of, of training or inference out of it, whether you're doing ML, DL, generative AI, mixture of experts, whatever is going to be next here. And I think that's a critical piece when you're a hyperscaler or um, a uh, even an OEM. I did get some confidence with Michael Dell showing up with a really cool video. And listen, he you know he was the only executive called out in Jensen's piece. It's not like you know you you talk about AI accurately being a, a zero sum uh, game here, but. Dell is clearly excited about the uh, Gaudi 3. I need to do the double click to see exactly what that means. The final thing, uh, I don't want to steal everything here, is uh, an AIPC. I got clear, we got clarity on the Lunar Lake uh, roadmap. Lunar Lake systems could literally ship uh, in, in October, right? In my head, I was always thinking Lunar Lake was December 32nd, right? Lunar Lake has you know, 45 NPU tops, 100 tops uh, system wide, but I was always expecting it to miss the holidays. And I think this is a positive thing uh, overall uh, in the market. Qualcomm will still be first with big NPU. And, and I do believe that from a uh, power uh, PPW, uh, I think Qualcomm will likely still be on top, but for Intel to be pulling this in is is monumental. Listen, I'm not Babe Ruthing it, right? They could find something late in testing that requires a metal spin, but boy, are we getting uh, closer uh, and closer. So I think what we have here is a three three horse race between Qualcomm, Intel, and AMD. Qualcomm, I believe, will have the operating system first. Uh, AMD and Intel will likely get it in the first part of 2025, but it is on, baby. The super cycle is strong, and I talked about this on CNBC and Yahoo Finance. Anywhere else?
The six five, okay. dude. You talked about the six five. Don't worry. Everybody needs to hear this once again. Pat, the Intel show uh to me kind of pointed in two directions. One is in the PC space in particular, you just can't rule the company out. I know so many people, the 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 Twitterati all want to basically say it's over, right? Everything's gonna be uh, an AI PC, Intel's, uh, Intel's late, they lost, uh, you know, whether it's been the article saying that, you know, Qualcomm's big MPU was going to dominate the market, whether it's been AMD first with the, you know, to market shipping the, what was it, 17 top AI PC, Pat flashed once again, what is it, 40 million quote unquote AI PCs. Now, again, what an AI PC is really hasn't been uh, starkly defined as one thing. So or staunchly is the right word, staunchly defined as one thing. I mean, we, we, we know that 10 tops, people have questioned that, whether or not that's real AIPC, but Intel has made the claim. It's sticking in the market. People get it. But the thing about Intel is you just can't underestimate the, the provenance of the relationships that it has in the go-to-market. It has had the retail relationships, the distribution relationships for the longest time. It has the OEMs, the designs, the scale, the MDF programs, the support, the ecosystem, the advertising, and the marketing. Disrupting that is going to be complicated. It is not a, oh my gosh, we come up with a better mouse trap. We have a better NPU. We have better uh, integration potentially with a Windows on ARM, um, and everyone's just going to flock away. It's not how behavior works. Um, like you said, we've had better Android designs than Apple phones for long times, and people won't leave it because of one stinking feature. We are going to see a slow um, distribution. I do think Qualcomm's doing some great things. Um, I do think AMD has some strength in its in its roadmap. But I think Intel proved, and by pulling this forward, I think it was almost like a little card trick up the sleeve. Like, hey, you know, here we go. We, uh, you thought you were, you know, gaining some market advantage, but we know how to play the game too. And like you said, having this out by Christmas or holidays, um, that's a huge yeah. unit volume opportunity. That's going to change the calculus. As people like to say, on the data center side, the the Gaudi thing, you know, Xeon Six is obviously pretty important too. And I mean, we didn't spend a lot of time talking about it, but Pat, you and I have had this kind of repeat cycle of trying to explain to the world like a lot of inference is going to be done on CPUs. All this existing cloud data centers and these data centers that have been built around uh, general purpose computing are still going to be there, and they're still going to be doing things to inference and AI against data. Um, you know, we're gonna. Our ERP systems, our, our supply chain management tools, our CRM systems, a lot of the types of inferencing we need to do does not require a big GPU. Um, and also, obviously, new architectures that might include extensions plus Gaudi plus Xeon 6 will be able to offer some really powerful optionality for customers. You know, we're seeing an entire market coming together for the first time in history to have an answer to NVIDIA. I call it the NVIDIA is Apple and uh, everyone else is Android. And so there's a desire in the marketplace to have an Android, to have another alternative. This doesn't mean that NVIDIA doesn't have a tremendous success path in its future. It just merely means AI is really big and there's going to be a really significant distribution of how AI gets deployed. It's not one way. It's not one thing. It won't be one company. Intel has a long road ahead to try to play in AI. They do need to get their GPU to market. They need one API at scale, that abstraction to be able to handle all the software and make it very, very easy to compile and put on Intel hardware will help them gain momentum. But the, the TLDR, as I like to say, is you can't rule them out, not on PCs, not on data center. And of course, we didn't even talk about Foundry, but we talked a lot about that last week. We'll come back to that another time.